Welcome back to Spartan Up the Podcast. I am Sephra the Seed Huntress. We have Colonel Nye. We have Zach Evanesh DeSena standing in just joking. Taking um, over. Taking over. That's and right. then we have Dr. Johnny Waite. And of course, Marion and Andrea behind the seeds doing all the beautiful things they do. So today we have Roman Sunder, who's Patel. Imagine a place where extraordinary never has to wait, Zach. Yes, so he's doing something awesome. He's taking the concept of success leaves clues, uh-huh. but he's put it into warp speed where he organizes the thought, the industry leaders, and he brings them all together. They share their concepts, they share their ideas, and then they go back and take action. And it's basically, that's an old concept, success leaves clues, but when you bring the best of the best in the world, it's on warp speed. This is going to be an awesome podcast. But If a successful person uh, considered themselves, like, and you stopped, it probably it wouldn't work because you need to change with the times, you need to keep moving forward, right? You just got to be better than yesterday. Mm-hmm. So, so um, name of the company is Patel. We have two companies, Patel and Worlds. Patel and Worlds. Mm-hmm. And by the way, we're here for Spartan Up Podcast. <laughs> for, that was a little confusing. And we're, we're in L.A. We're in um, your offices. Yep. And, and um, for, for two companies, Patel and Worlds. How old are the companies? Uh, Patel is, we're going into our ninth year. The wow. first two years were just a passion project. Right. And with Worlds, we're going into our second year. Wow. And, and um, where'd you come from? Like, are you, did you grow up in L.A.? Did you, like, what was your background? How did, how did this happen? Um, I'm just, Rus- just a, a Russian immigrant. Oh, you're Russian. Right? Make we could turn the cameras off. He's <laughs> Russian. Of course he's going to be successful. Every Russian immigrant is successful. <laughs> uh, that or maybe he's an engineer or living in, in New York somewhere. But you guys, are, you guys are tough as nails, right? Did you grow up in, you grew up in Russia? No, I was no. only five. I okay. think that um, I think being an immigrant is a, a good ingredient for being successful. Yeah. I grew up... Um, in uh, our family moved to the United States with less than $100. My mom was a 29-year-old, happy, hopeful young woman, and, but there was a lot of bigotry and racism against Jews there. And so she didn't think it was a good place for our family and to for, you know, to live. And so we moved where, here where in, Russia, was it? In, a, in a city called Odessa in the Ukraine, okay. which I like to call it. It's like the Miami of the Ukraine. Okay. Yeah, that's great. So it's a nice, it's a nice place. Yeah, it's and, nice. and the trouble that's going on there now, is it near Odessa? Partially. I think it's all over, Got but it. it's just kind of an unstable, unstable country. Yeah. So I'm happy to be here. So she packs up, how many years ago was that? Uh, this is 78. 78, yeah, okay. Yeah, so this is 30 years ago. Got it. So you were born yeah. in 73. Yeah, 74. Got it. Yeah. Okay, so then, so you land in L.A.? Yeah, land in L.A., uh, my, my parents went to Orange County and saw the ocean. It reminded them of Lagoon, Odessa. Of Odessa. Right. And so we moved to Orange County um, near the railroad tracks. You can hear the train going by every night. Yeah. Um, and then uh, my friends lived in Laguna, yeah. and they had the million-dollar houses, and wow. they had the Ferraris in the driveway. Uh, and so to me, that was, I, I used to think, oh, like, if you're born wealthy, like, that's the ticket, you know. Right. But I've, what I've learned is that that's actually a disadvantage. Sure. There's no doubt about it. But did you aspire? You saw the Ferraris. Were you aspiring? That's where you were going? I want to know the formula. Got it. Like, I'm always, I'm like a formula guy. Right. Like, what's the formula for success? Right. You know, How did they get there? Yeah, I'm good at reverse engineering things. Yeah. <laughs> no, and, and it sounds very similar because I was looking at the nice cars and the nice houses of the pools I was cleaning. And I yeah. was saying the same thing. Like, how did, how did he get that? Right. Right? And, and so what did you figure out? That he read the Wall Street Journal every day. Right. And so my dream was to work on Wall Street. Got it. All right. So let's go back. You wanted to read the Wall Street Journal because you thought you wanted to go to Wall Street. I thought was- they had the house. They traveled around the world. It was a loving, great family, beautiful family. They just kind of check, check, check. They had, they had the view. And so I'm like, that's the American dream. That's my American dream. Right. And so what'd you do? I um, ended up get, kind of getting into UCLA. Mm-hmm. And uh, I applied to... So tell that story, getting to UCLA. Um, my, my guidance instructor told me that I wasn't smart enough to get to UCLA. Sound like my story. This is unbelievable. 
You heard my story. This is a no. I haven't. <laughs> that's unbelievable. All right. So and uh, so you got, if, if the best way to motivate me, just like you, is yeah. to tell you can't do something. Right. That's unbelievable. <laughs> and okay. So I went to a junior college. I went to a state school and ended up at a UC. It's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> really. Yeah, same thing. Same thing. No, right. Are you Russian too? No, I'm not oh, Russian, okay. but but um, yeah, this is crazy. Okay, <laughs> all right. So then, so you get in? Yeah, finally. yeah. Uh, I barely. But you uh, wanted it. You wanted yeah. it bad. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. yeah. I didn't know what wanting it bad was, but I right. knew that that was like my magnet. I was magnetized towards that, and um, and so then. At UCLA, I applied to all the bulge firms and all the firms. I applied to 72 investment banks. Wow. Um, and, and you you know, like uh, like a Wolf of Wall Street or a Boiler Room's like yeah. number 30 or 40. Sure. I applied to 72. Wow. And um, out of 72... Because I'm, you didn't you didn't know where on Wall Street you would... You, you, I applied right. to you didn't every under, you didn't single... Under, you didn't understand the business enough because you, you weren't looking to... I'm 20 years old. I yeah, didn't right, understand. Right. Like, right. I, I, was, I was so... I'll tell you later how naive I was, yeah. but I was... So naive, sure, uh, and probably still am, which is which and that, is great. That was uh, 93, 94? When was that? Oh wow! So uh, that must have been like ninety, yeah, ninety four. Yeah, okay, ninety four. Yeah, and uh, I was uh, a junior in in college, yeah. uh, trying to get an internship. Yeah. So I got denied by um, not seventy two investments, but I actually got seventy three rejection letters because wow, I, I got an extra them. letter. Yeah, I got right, like, from J.P. I, Morgan. Just don't forget never to call. Yes, right. yeah. <laughs> just just in case you're thinking about applying again. <laughs> right. So it's yeah. J.P. Morgan. Nice. So they're, um, they're serious. That's yeah, yeah. They send you two letters. So so that was pretty <laughs> f- up. Right. Uh, and so I'm like, how am I going to do this? Right. And so I'm like, oh, let's th- you know, growing up being Russian yeah. in Orange County, yeah. uh, is like me and like African American kids. There are two, and that's it. Right. You know. So. Yeah. Um, that was another thing I, I realized that growing up, like being different is not cool, yeah. you know, where everyone yeah. else is just like surfing sure. and I'm like Russian. Yeah. Uh, but then I'm like, well, how can I be now different became good because I used my Russian and I applied to move to Moscow and, uh, yeah. went to Moscow state university there, which is like a big deal. Nice. Uh, but coming from UCLA, it was much easier. Right. And then I entered for like Morgan Stanley. I got in, an internship. In Russia. Yeah. Smart. Because there's like three guys right. there and they'll take anyone that speaks English. Yeah. Smart. <laughs> I, um, this, this story is uncannily, uh, un- eerily or whatever the word is, um, similar. So, um, so now you're in Russia. So, long story interesting. Yeah. Um, I met these guys from Credit Suisse First Boston. Story gets crazier. Okay. And they've got these suits on. They're like 22, but I yeah. thought they must have been like managing directors. They must sure. have been like 50 years yeah. old. And uh, so I applied to six of the top firms after I finished up my internship for nine months. Yeah. And I got offers from three places. Nice. For uh, Merrill Lynch, bulge firms. Yeah. Merrill Lynch. Mid-90s. Yeah. Uh, yeah. First Boston yeah. And, and another place. Can't remember. And just to show you how naive I was, they worked for a group called Glo- Global Power. Okay. And when you're 20 years old and you have a chance to work for a group called Global Power, you're in. that is the <laughs> f- Yeah, you're <laughs> okay? in. So uh, that's the move. And so um, I joined the group. Yeah. And I joined the Global Power group. And it wasn't for three months until I realized that Global Power meant oil and gas. Nice. I just nice. thought it was world domination. <laughs> yeah, right. I didn't know it was right, electricity. Right. Okay. Yeah. And so I switched groups. <laughs> Got it. And where and where'd you end up? I did. You're like, in New York now. I was in New York. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then I never worked in project finance. And Got it. Stuff. How long did you stay at Credit Suisse? Two years. I did my tour of duty. Got it. 97 you got out. Yeah. Got it. So um, Credit Suisse changed my life. Your life? Yeah, in a positive way. No yeah. way. Yeah. It, was, it was like the best of times, the worst of times. Yeah. The same here. It's yeah. probably the most bad. And around that same time. So it's, um, again, this is crazy. Um, all right. So you leave finance because? I, everyone was so smart. Like, <laughs> all right, all right. I'm like, I'm like not as smart as these guys. I don't yeah. have the passion sure. for finance. Like I'm good, yeah. but I, it's like playing in the NBA and being like average. I'm like, I, I'm not going to compete. Sure. Right? So I'm like, I need to, I need to find something I'm good at. Got it. That yeah. I'm not good at. I need to find something. I was really envious of people that just were really good at things, even though they didn't have passion for it. I was like, I can't be good at something unless I have a, a really deep passion for it. Got it. Even school, that's why I was an average student, is because yeah. I didn't have a passion for my classes. Yeah, right. But if I got a passion, I got super passionate. You got, you got crazy about it. I got crazy yeah, about it. I'm very similar. Healthily crazy. Yeah. I hope you're not sitting still while you listen. If you are, you better get a burpee break in. 
Hey, make sure you join us next week. You're going to meet a guy who just sold his drink company. As he says, he solved the diet dilemma, sold his drink company for $1.7 billion. Ben Vice of Buy. It is incredible. It is incredible. If you want to see more incredible videos or listen, you go to either YouTube or iTunes and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. It's 97. Yeah. You're not passionate about finance. Do you find something before you leave or you just leave? No, I've, I worked for like a real estate fund and yeah. like for real estate in New York. I told the guy that was my boss that you could find someone better. That's interesting. <laughs> this, right. so I, I kind of cool. fired myself yeah. <laughs> for him. Uh, and then I got a job in a merchant bank in L.A. I wanted to move back to L.A. And I wanted okay. to get closer like, to venture capital. So I, I did that whole thing for a little while. And you stayed in that for? And I did that. And then one of the portfolio companies I liked. And so I joined their company as the head of strategy. And then okay. I realized their strategy sucked. Oh. And uh, we couldn't work out a deal, so I started my own company nice. uh, called Access 360, and we built that from one store. It's kind of like I was after first, actually after first Boston, I wanted to work for MTV, but I I couldn't get a job. I nice. thought I could get a job anywhere. I've, I was never more confident in my life than I was a 22 year old analyst at Credit Suisse for Boston. Like, yeah, I thought, you like, you I work anywhere at this point. Yeah. yeah. So for and then I applied for, for the, at MTV, and I couldn't get an, in, like a PA job there. Wow. Uh, and so then. But I had a passion for youth culture. I had a passion for action sports and music and film and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, then I... So what was Axis 360? That's what... It was basically MTV when you're shopping. Okay, explain that. So whenever you go into malls and yeah. stores these days, like, yeah. it's all about the experience and there's like TVs. Got it. Like you go into like, I don't know if you go into these places, but like an H&M or like even a North Face these days, they have the they big... Have t- TVs. And so you would... TVs. You would Make that all happen. We create the content, Got and it. then we package and sell the advertising. That's smart. Yeah, no. I was just skiing in, in Japan, and um, and they're running TVs with really cool snowboarding videos going and stuff like that. So you would you would Snow do brand. all that, right? Yeah. And, and so then you, and then there's an Apple store, and you put an Apple ad, and instead of sitting at home buying an Apple. Got it. Got it. So then and then what? So that. So we grew from one store to ten thousand stores. Wow. Became the largest uh, network in the U.S. Um, That's awesome. And then we did all the stadiums and. Became a pretty big business, fun business. It was it was a, it was a dream business for me. It was like and, that, and that dream. was uh, mid two thousands. Yeah. And then what? And then um, I'm I had, prying here because that's what we do on the show. No, that's all good. It's all it's all, you know. I, I think that life happens. You know, it doesn't happen on people's highlights reels on social media. Sure. Ninety nine percent of life happens behind the highlight reel. Sure. And I think the behind the highlight reel is where the the growth is at. You know, yeah, yeah. So. and it's good for people to see and, and, and listen yeah. because, because, right, like, like um, things are going to go wrong, and so they should hear other people that are successful, uh, what went wrong, and how you overcame it. Yeah, not only that, but I just think it's, you know, pretty messed up for, for someone like yourself talking about how successful you are and how great you are when you're already just, you being the founder of Spartan Race is already intimidating for a lot of people. So I think it's really important for leaders. I think there's over inspiration out there. Yeah, good there's point. Like with, yeah. Even with what we do at our yeah. companies, there's too many TED Talks, too many main stage talks. I want people to talk about their problems. Yeah. I want it's people to talk about their failures. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, where the growth goes. Yeah. So, so I have a big passion for that. So you, did you sell the business or what did you do? Yeah, we sold half the business and the yeah. other half of the business is still growing. Nice. And then you started these other projects. Then I... Um, my last two years, I did access for seven years. Into our fifth year, um, I, I'm always looking for new passion projects. Sure. And I, I, again, passionate for youth culture. I partnered, we started working with the State Department nice. on combating extreme terrorism. So um, the revolutions that are happening around the world, all the ISIS stuff, all the mm-hmm. FARC stuff, I'm really passionate about how all that unfolds in our in our, on, our, on earth, right? That's like, to me like the highest calling of like stability within, stability and love within the world. Sure. And so I work with the government um, helping combat extreme terror. How do you do that? I mean, if you could tell us. Yeah, I mean, from what I can talk about, I think that you want to get to the truth and you want to get to the corner and you want to see how people live their lives. Right. Uh, it's not something that you do like in a think tank in Washington, D.C., sure. on like how like a 16-year-old kid in Egypt wants to start an uprising. It's, um, I, you're going to be upset with me saying I can't help myself, but um, I wanted to start an uprising in a box. So Because um, I'd see these uprisings, and I'm like, they don't even know why they're uprising. We should at least have a kit. 
Yeah. Where it's like, first you got to write down what you're uprising about. That's right? good. That would have been <laughs> and great. And then put some like nerf things in there so it don't hurt anybody. But right. that was my idea. That would have been great, actually. <laughs> that was a crazy idea. But no, it's true because all the, all the extremists around the world have a rule book that they create on YouTube on like how to blow shit up. You know? Right. And so, you know, we need to have a counter rule book, counter extremism. Yeah, right. And is it working? Well, I think that, you know, there's still a lot of instability, sure. but it's like, you know, progress, not perfection. So I think every day you do your best and you make progress. And there's a lot of smart people, super passionate people thinking about these issues. I'm going to connect you um, with a guy. Um, he's a storyteller. He creates narratives, um, transmedia. Mm -hmm. So um, he'll do stuff with the Department of Defense where, where they're looking to create a narrative. And All right, so then, so then what can you talk about with... Patel? Did I say it right? Yeah. What can you talk about? Yeah. Um, so, the so you're future, done, the State Department stuff is, is on autopilot. Half your business is going, and now you're... Yeah, yeah. so the future of our world, literally 60%, 70% of the globe is under the age of 30. Right. Um, and there's uh, no, like, Davos for, for culture. That, for there's that no group. United right. Nations. But the right. future of our world is, like, in, at, at stake. Right. So I just thought it was crazy that there wasn't any community or event that I can go to or the ones I went to sucked. Sure. It was like, like some conference or analyst conference or advertising thing. It was just bad. Yeah. The wrong people talking about the wrong things. And uh, I just we just brought 25 friends together. It wasn't a company. I just yeah. paid it out of my bank okay. account. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it was at my friend's hotel. So we, can got, a, we got a good rate and the projector didn't work. Uh, Huh. And uh, the science was cool, though. We had one company per, per industry. So for yeah. action sports, it was Bob McKnight, nice. founder of Quicksilver. And for gaming, the guys from Activision. We had the government guys there, and CMO of HP for technology. Wow. And then the second year, they're like, hey, I thought it was over. They're like, hey, let's do it again. Nice. And so we did it again. And then. Um, and it's was, just a collaboration on, hey, what could we do to make things better? Yeah, buddies. What do you, th what do you think? Right. And right. Then, uh, our th then people started like talking about it and. Yeah. started to create expectations and so I decided not to do it again huh after what, second when year. was that that was because I was still running Access got it that was so I much. did Patel as a passion project right. my board is like what are you doing yeah you know that's and fair yeah, yeah like right. I'm, I'm not right. the kind of person that can like juggle like a bunch of things right. like I can barely do one thing sure barely I love this I'm gonna I gotta yeah that's good <laughs> I like, because you're not like, um, you know, a lot of people are ego, I like the fact that you uh, know exactly where you are. Oh, yeah. Right? right? Like, I'm super inspired yeah. by so many people I meet every day that are able to do so many more things than I am. You're humble. I don't know. I just try to keep my eyes open and just learn but, from But you did okay. I mean, you got, you got, you're pretty close to um, a dealership of Ferraris. You were, you were, right? you were <laughs> looking at that one Ferrari. You're doing pretty good. Yeah. And then, so, well, I wasn't going to do it. And then I had this fateful lunch at, at the Ritz Carlton in Laguna, and there was a monk at the lunch. A monk? This is uncannily. There's a monk at the lunch. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, what's up with the monk? You know, the woman that invited me like a, has a has a uh, a center for living peace in Orange County. Nice, like a Buddhist center. Yeah. And in the he's, course, he's, of in, the, he's in a robe. Full on deal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and if you know uh, monks, wooden beads. I know monks. Yeah, you can't really have like a normal business conversation. It's like, yeah. how are you feeling? Depends on the monk. I've met one monk. I'll explain that one later. I think I've met two monks. Yeah. You know, and so this is the longest lunch conversation I had over a vegetarian meal. Yeah. And it turns out that his name is Lama Tenzin, yeah. and he's the Dalai Lama's emissary for peace. Wow. Which is in like American terms, it's like the Dalai Lama's chief of staff. Love it. And so I realized that the Dalai, this holiness. Uh, speaks to universities all the time. Yeah. So I'm like, oh man, like I gotta pitch him on Patel. Sure. And so I'm like, how do I pitch this? Because he's not even a business person. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Think quick. I'm like, okay, Lama Tenzin, you know how His Holiness loves speaking at universities to young people and inspiring them. Yeah. He's like, oh yes, yes, Holiness loves speaking at schools. <laughs> I go, you know how uh, those children in the stands are wearing jeans. And there, uh, I noticed he signed up on Twitter, and yeah. they're on Twitter, and I saw uh, he, he had an iPhone, he, yeah. and they have iPhones. He goes, oh, yes, Holiness just got on Twitter. I go, Lama Tenzin, wouldn't it be incredible if His Holiness spoke to the heads of those companies that impressed, that 
Oh, guide those, those kids. kids. Yeah. And he goes, oh, uh, I will meditate on that. <laughs> and then I go, don't you think it'd be great if he you know, yeah. spoke at our thing? Yeah. Um, which in a business conversation, let's say we're in a meeting, I'm pitching yeah. you something, and you're sure. like, hey, what about this blah, blah, blah? Yeah. And you're like, let me think about it. Yeah. It's probably a no. Yeah, right. So, so he, how long did he meditate? Uh, well, I called him like a month later. and He was still uh, meditating. No, he goes, he, he, he goes, I think you're doing a good thing. I'm like, that's, that's pretty cool, even for a Jewish guy. You're like, that's cool that a monk tells you that. <laughs> right. that and I'm like, all right, well, what do you think you want to do? Right. That What about holiness? Yeah. He goes, I will go to Dharmasala on my next trip, and I will speak to him. So uh, two months pass. I don't hear anything. I finally get a hold of him. You know, we, for an hour, half an hour, we talk about pleasantries. Like, how sure. are you? And I care about him, and I'm curious about him, and yeah. he's curious. Be polite to me, I think. I'm sure. just some, sure. some guy. And uh, he goes, oh, his holiness is very busy. He did not have a chance to think about it, or meditate on it. But I, but I will have the elders meditate on it. Nice. So I'm imagining what it looks like, like a bunch of elders <laughs> meditating, meditating on the yeah. cow. All about you. Yeah, I'm right. just like, that's just such like a crazy life, yeah. you know, like a yeah. crazy moment. So this is, we started talking August. Now it's like October, November, December passes. Uh, I'm like, it's not happening. And so Patel's over, right? And that was like a, I wouldn't say I don't, I don't get depressed, but it was a really low moment for me because I was kind of out of love with my access thing because I was falling You wanted to be doing this? With this. But you, everything was depending on the elders meditating. Yeah, right? yeah. And, and you, weren't uh, getting, you weren't getting the signals. But now I'm not going to be a, the good, kind of that guy and follow yeah. up with him all the time. Now sure. I feel like I'm just being a jerk. Like what was that, TV, that movie, uh, Singles? When he just he kept calling the girl, and the girl finally just hung up. So right. you want to be that guy, right? Yeah. Exactly. Right. So have some self, some dignity. Yeah. Uh, so January, the November passes, December passes, January twenty second. I get a phone call. It's Lama Tenzin, um, but we catch up. It wasn't like sure. it was like you know. And he goes. Uh, so we talk for forty five minutes. At the end of the conversation, I go out of curiosity. You know, now that you know all this is you know behind this. Uh, did you ever? Had, did you have a chance to talk to Holiness about uh, his Holiness about he calls him Holiness his yeah. Holiness about yeah. um, Patel and he goes uh, yes 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 I go what do you say he goes he thinks what you're doing is a good thing <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a religious joke it's gonna keep going right? I go so. I go that's incredible so now right. I'm like how do I do the ass right and uh, I go uh, Lama Tenzin since we're host, we're having Patel at the St. Regis, do you think it's a good idea that we reserve the penthouse suite for His Holiness so that he's comfortable? And he goes, yes, that's a good idea. Wow, that so was that, it. That was you, you slipped it right in there. I like that. I like that. And so, um, and then... And then it happened. In three months, we ramped it all up, and it happened. And I quit my job as a sole founder. Wow. And I decided to do this with no revenue model. Uh, but and that, what year was that? That was... 2011, probably. 2011. Yeah, so you, this is a big focus now, since 11. Obsession. Right. Yeah, I've worked harder on this more than anything I've worked on Got it. in my life. And, and it's a once a year meeting? Or? It's a year-round community. Got it. Um, and to be a member, you have to be a Patel top five company in the world, and either wow. the CEO or the CMO, wow. or a cultural icon. Um, wow. So everyone for music, it's David Guetta, and for news, it's Mike Bloomberg, and for retail, it's Terry Lundgren. It's unbelievable. Um, surf, it's Kelly Slater. So. Yeah. Um, and it's now the most influential group of minds and brands that's ever been assembled in the world. Wow. Which is cool because brands drive Knuckles culture. Knuckles on that one. That's unbelievable. <laughs> Thank I mean, you. Yeah. Brands drive culture yeah. more than countries do these days. What so, was the name of the group you worked for at Credit Suisse? Uh, well, Global Power. You got it. You got Global <laughs> Power. <laughs> Patel, Global Power. Good job. I guess so. Right? Yeah. You should you should call those guys up. Yeah. <laughs> Say you got there. Yeah. Hopefully global power for <clears throat> for other people. <laughs> <laughs> so so what's the um, what's the plan going forward? Yeah. The, the, with Patel, it's it's really you're running out of famous people to bring into the group. Yeah. Um, now that we got you and Charlie part of it. Yeah. Right. I don't <laughs> know about that. <laughs> they say you're an average of your five best friends. I would pull that group down. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Um, and so we re- like our, our mission is to do the NBDB, do what's never been done before. Love it. And so we'll help Virgin Galactic, right. we'll help David Blaine, we'll help um, the Olympics on their future platforms. Nice. Our muscle memory is things that haven't been done. If it's been transactional, like that's just just a little boring for us. Sure. Um, we realize that the people at the sea level bless the project. 
But the people that are actually doing the work are like the directors, the VPs, the SVPs. So we started, we've been thinking about a new community to, bri to bridge the C-level executives and their teams. And so we so created a new community. Yeah. So for instance, we helped um, um, Janelle Monet, the actress and singer, um, partner with Pepsi to kick off the Super Bowl halftime show. Nice. We do a lot of those type of deals. Big yeah. deal, global stage. It wasn't the president of Pepsi that did the deal. Right. It was a woman named Emma, who was the head of music, which is like a director VP type role. Got it. We realized that to increase the number of projects that we do, we needed to bring in their teams yeah, that are right. actually doing the work. You got to buy in. It's a no-brainer. Yeah. Yeah. So our mission, we're a mission-based organization, yeah. is to shape tomorrow's culture. Yeah. And that you do it very simply by creating projects and partnerships that have never been done. Whether yeah. it's Hyperloop or whether it's SpaceX, those are just projects and partnerships. Love it. That's simple. I'd love to get some of the big food companies making healthier food. So, yeah, if you well, ever want a list of things that I'd like changed around the world that I can have global power, I'll just give you a list. Let's right? do it. Just say, can you do this, 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 and this? So that's the point, <laughs> yeah. you know, because it's easy to it's easy to hang out with guys that are already bought into the Kool Aid of yeah. positive, healthy options. Yeah. But for me, it's much more exciting to to the preach to the unindoctrinated. Sure. And to influence and create once in a lifetime moments that create trust for people to trust us to have a, a, a more positive approach and path forward. I had, um, you know, I'm very difficult around partnerships and sponsorship because I'm, I'm really just want to give people water and celery if I had my choice, right? I'm really particular on that stuff. And, um, but the reality is we've got to live in a society where there's, you know, stuff being bought and sold. And somebody smart said to me, you know, your real power, which is what you're doing, your real power is if you can get to these big companies and get them to change a little bit and maybe sell some healthier foods and produce some other options, right? So I love, love what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you're, you. You're pulling it off. Yeah, I mean, that is like our metric for success. Yeah. And the things that we introduce into our community are positive, positive culture shaping initiatives, whether yeah. it's around social impact or whether it's around food. It's amazing, right, when you look back, um, you wouldn't have thought you'd be here doing this um, when you were at Credit Suisse, right? Like, I, I, I wouldn't, if six, five years ago when I was, remember, uh, uh, five years ago when I fell out of love with my other company yeah. and I lost Patel, I was actually at one of the lowest points in my life. Yeah, but they were meditating. They were meditating, <laughs> they were right? Meditating. You didn't know. That there was but to, serious, me, to yeah. me, to me, actually, like the the... the at the time, the most difficult points that you go through in your life, at that moment, it's almost as if it's, and I'm sure you can relate to this, the more difficult that moment is for you or that time for you is, later in life, might take a year, might take five years, you look back, those are the most important moments in your life. Yeah, I don't think you remember the middle of the road, right? You, it's yeah. the extremes that, that are the most important, whether it's the bottom or the top. I would say that motivation for losing my passion and losing my love right. for my business personality, my business, um, I think, created a huge fear inside of me that I never want to lose it again. Sure. And so it's been my, one of my biggest drivers. Give um, a couple of takeaways. So the people out there listening, you know, people want bite-sized things. So um, adversity is good, right? Yeah. I mean, I think that, um, um, that it's, number one, it's your lowest points are your biggest pillars for growth in the future. Right. So that's number one. So don't get broken. Yeah, I mean, right. I, it's not one. It's like Winston Churchill. That's He's one of my um, kind of favorite people. Mine too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you probably know this quote then, but, you know, uh, success is going from failure to failure to failure yeah. to failure without losing any enthusiasm. Yeah. So when people say that you can't give up and you just do whatever it takes and no is never the answer, you just have to be sensible about it. But, you just do whatever it takes to make it happen. I think optimists don't see those failures, right? It's right. like... You can't. Yeah. If you want to be successful, you can't see failures as a negative. Right. For me, failure and every single no, even those 73 rejection letters... I love that. ...are just one no closer to yes. Yeah. The more no's I get, I'm like collecting no's because I know I'm going to get to yes. Yeah. Like where else is there to go? I can't get any more no's. Love it. So and, the only and, rational place to get to is yes. That's yes. And, and, um, and then... Um, being an immigrant was a home run. So what I take away from that is uh, fight for milk every day. And uh, what else? Give me one more. Um, 
Well, I think like another thing. That I'm having I, fun here. This is like, <laughs> like I'm like a kid in a candy store. Uh, I have I have the the huge honor of meeting some of the most influential people in the world, yeah. and I feel sometimes kind of guilty. Uh, it's kind of like I'm not the kind of guy that likes to travel on his own because I like to share it with others. Yeah. So when I meet someone of of inspiration and influence, I'm like, ah, oh, I just I, I, I can't. This can't just be for me. So I always try to learn from them so I can share it with others. So for me, a big part of Worlds and with Patel is to share their stories, you know, because they need to share their expertise. And there's one thing that I've, there's a commonality that I've found through all of the top performers that I've met, whether it's, you know, the SEAL Team 6 guys yeah. or whether it's um, Kelly Slater or Tony Hawk or um, so many others. And I call it going off. And uh, it's OHF, which is they have um, an obsession, a healthy obsession for what they do. Yeah. Like if you talk to any of those guys, yeah, right. they're not like, that's business or that's life. Right. Like it's just who they are. Right. You know? So I think having a healthy obsession for what you do um, is, must happen. Um, but it's only if you want to be the best. If you don't want to be the best and you want to be marginal, I think you could have a really great like work-life balance. Sure. You know, and a work-life whatever. But if you want to be the best in the world, um, everyone else is obsessed. Yeah. It, so requir- it requires great sacrifice. It requires right. obsession, sacrifice, right. all that. Number two, because you're obsessed, then you're going to wake up thinking about it. You're going to go to sleep thinking about it. You're going to take notes in the middle of the night. I take notes in the middle of the night. Like, sure. I'm happy to. To me, it's not like a weird thing. Like, huh. yeah, I get some good thinking. And so you put in more hours of than anybody else. So it's like the 10,000 hour rule. Sure. And then the final ingredient that I find with those people, I'll give you an example. There's this big wave surfer that I go, here, let me tell you a few things that you have in common with other successful people. Right. And he goes, well, there's, and so the last thing is focus, is that right. you can't be distracted. You can't be distracted partying too much. You can't be distracted wasting your time on social media. You can't be distracted um, doing anything. You need to be like mission driven. Yeah. Um, and when I told him those things, three things, obsession, hours, and focus, he goes, well, it's really rare that I get big wave surf. Right. So I haven't really told anyone this, but what I do is I'll go in my bedroom and I'll sit in my bed and for hours I'll visualize surfing big waves. Right. He's obsessed. Yeah. He's obsessed. Yeah. You know? That's so how you win. To me, yeah. and I love, um, you know, I love hanging out with young people especially yeah. because I wish somebody would have told me that. A thousand percent. That's why we're doing this podcast. Yeah. I, I'm trying to... Um, jumpstart a lot of people and, and have great. them That's a great avoid word. all those mistakes we made. But sometimes I wonder, maybe it was the mistakes that yeah. get you there, right? So you, you kind of got to do it. Yeah. And I think success too early isn't healthy either. It's sure. like that saying like young money kills. Yeah. So, um, you know, everyone has their own path. All right. So that was the man from Odessa, the immigrant. And it would, you know, Joe always says, you know, that the, He's looking for the Eastern European or the immigrant, the guy with the frame of reference. And this was, uh, Roman was right there, right? Oh, yeah. He, he, well, he wasn't, his parents were immigrants, but he came, but he still had that mindset. It was still kind of stamped in his DNA that hard work would lead to success, right? So yeah, what'd you guys think of him? Phenomenal. I, I, I loved his energy and the idea that he, um, he talked about growing up um, in Orange County and seeing the success and trying to figure out what the formula was was very successful, figured that formula out, but then decided he wanted to do something more, something more than his Access 360, which is a very successful business, but how could he shape the world? And I love that it's, he's gone way beyond himself and is bringing all these incredible people together to, to massively shift our culture. This is essentially the old concept, the mastermind concept, where people would, uh, someone like the great leaders in the world, they would get away from their normal day-to-day routine. They would actually go out into the woods for a couple days camp and share their biggest success stories. Or they would share their obstacles, and then they would work together. This is how you overcome it. And he's taking it basically to, like I said, that warp speed level, which makes it so powerful because we always hear that saying, success leaves clues. But in this instance, he just congregates the best of the best who are already moving so quickly. I think that it's like builds such a powerful future. I, I like the, the NBDB, never been done before. Yeah. I never heard that one. And I like it. And they said... Our muscle memory is things that haven't been done before. And like that's such a cool idea of saying the things that are familiar to us is going into the unknown, mm-hmm. right? And I think that's... Uh, and I also had no idea that 70% of the world's population was under 30. That's... Uh, I don't... Yeah, well, I think in a lot of the developing worlds, you, you, you're, 
your life expectancy isn't as high as it is here. Actually, I don't right. think we're that high anymore. But, but yeah, I mean, you get out <laughs> into the third world nation, most of the people are going to be much younger. Huh. Well, speaking of nations, one other thing I thought was really interesting, and it was a thought I hadn't considered, but it's, it's spot on when he said that nowadays companies shape culture way more than countries shape culture. When yeah. you think about it, there used to be an American culture and a British culture and a French culture, and yet now, you know, it's Apple that's driving the culture. Right. It's Google that's driving the culture. It's um, a Spartan. Spartan well, that's driving Spartan, the culture. Spartan exactly. is definitely driving the culture. But, but just, just how incredible that is. You know, when brands have become very uh, international and multinational, and the idea that... Um, that you know the CEO of a of a major company can have a much bigger impact on on the world than the president of a lot of countries. Well, just look at what's happening while during the filming of this. I'm not sure when it'll be post, but in the filming of it, uh, we've just had the, uh, the president turn down or take us out of the Paris Accord, right? And a lot of our con- or a lot of our companies, excuse me, have said, "Well, we're staying in." Yeah, it's interesting, right? Isn't so it? yeah. it's exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, and and just so cool that he's um he's found a way to, to harness. Really, the, the the very leading people in, in all these industries, and as he says, 70 major industries. And um, what, what a cool concept to draw that together. I love his story about the Dalai Lama, yeah. when, when he said that um, that he's talking to uh, Lama, Tenzin. Lama Tenzin, and how he had his salesman's hat on. He goes, how do, how do I pitch this guy on yeah, this? Right. And you know, you're always selling something. And uh, it's just really neat the way he, uh, in the end, he did the assumptive close. The, should, should we I book, book the him the penthouse suite? <laughs> So yeah, pretty pretty neat stuff. Yeah, this is this is what uh, the what I try to do is pick up just one powerful thing, and he's not just trying to learn or bring together one industry. He's bringing the leaders in all the industries that have you know whether it's fitness, whether it's like different you know things under the umbrella of fitness, surfing, snowboarding, uh, computer technology. He brings them all together because these. One idea you can borrow or steal from somebody else's industry to apply your own and can be the biggest. Yeah, and you may not even know maker. what the application will be. Yes, and it may be something that hits you right then. It may be something that hits you later down the road, right? But to open up yourself to opportunities and to open yourself up, you know, your mind to, to different ways of thinking. So you get in there. It's just networking, kind of on a grand scale, right? It's, Correct. It's like, mass like- and force. Like um, the mycelial networks of mushrooms networking yeah, on a mass scale. I thought, we're, we're, we're diving right back in. I, I, Boom. I thought well, exactly the same thing. Well, thought. no, but actually, if you I, think I about it. I failed to say it, but I thought it. But Patau, <laughs> right? Patau is looking at the ecology of thought leaders. And yeah, when you look at so. things like at a whole systems approach, holistically, instead of just like the specialist, you look more generalist, you say, all of these things do go into facilitating what is the industries of our life. And so if you bring all these people together, each of their different uh, ecosystem functions, sorry, my brain only can think in uh, ecological terms, but ecosystem functions allow them to come together to create this soil to germinate these great ideas and have all the, have all the parts and pieces they need to really facilitate its execution. You're, you're here because of your brain. Yeah. Yeah. It makes me think a bit of the 431 project, too, that we did right here in Vermont, and that was where Joe... Wanted to bring a number of the people that he knew together from different backgrounds, from sport, from yeah. business, from uh, entertainment. And really, again, the idea is to do something bigger by drawing those all together. And, and you look at Spartan, and, and you know, it started out as, as a race, and then it became really a movement. And now it's really... A family. It, it's a culture, right? And yeah. the, the idea is how can we help to shift the world's thinking around fitness, around contribution, mm-hmm. around being bigger than yourself? Well, I, I don't want to be... I'm not the teaser on this yeah. panel here, but... And you, but we had we had a well we well, we had a conversation with Joe and I think he's got he's got a um, what's the word I'm looking for an announcement he's going to make along those lines of something uh-huh. else he's planning uh-huh. to uh-huh. increase and give more opportunity to people and so he's going to be reaching out to give more people an opportunity to run a race. Cool. So if you, you want to know more about to that us. and everything else, uh, come to uh, SpartanUpPodcast.com uh, or go to Spartan.com slash podcast and uh, you can find out more about this and everything else. All things Spartan. Thank you for watching another epic story of success. If you like our message, please share Spartan Up with your friends and subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, or wherever you catch our show, maybe in the woods. Spartan Up is brought to you by Spartan Race. To find a race near you, visit Spartan.com. Spartan.com.